All right, welcome back guys. So our project is still running. So if we make any changes to this, it automatically updates there. But for this section of the application, we are going to build a layout file. So that basically means that we want this content, this whole index fault to go as content inside a layout. So we're gonna give the layout like a header and a footer and maybe some other stuff later. But the way to do that in SvelteKit is quite simple actually. You just type underscore underscore layout dot svelte and then automatically it will treat this as the layout. Now obviously now that I've said this layout here nothing happens because now it treats this as a layout and according to our layout dot svelte file nothing should happen. So the first way to get our index file back in here is we're going to type slot and that's just a self-closing tag. This is a svelte tag as soon as I save you see it all comes back. Now, if I wanted to, I could write, uh, let's just say H1 header above that. And bam, you see, we get the layout and then we get the content, which is in slot automatically. And let's do H2 footer. Bam, we get header, our content, which is the slot over here and footer, which is absolutely fantastic. Now I'm going to make that a little bit prettier by actually, you know, let's create like an actual header tag. So a header is an HTML tag, like a general, it basically acts as a div, but it's more semantically correct. And in here, I want to say h1 surf spots. There we go. Uh, let's do that for now. And then we can do, hmm, what should we do for the footer? For the footer, you get a footer tag as well. And for our footer, let's just make the footer say, I like feet. Fantastic. There we go. Now, obviously I want this to be a bit more pretty. So for example, on our footer here, or for everything, actually, we can add a style tag at the bottom here. This is the wonderful thing about Svelte is you can just add elements in. And then the style tag, this is scoped to the layout file. So anything in here can only affect this layout component. So for example, if I changed, see, we have two H ones. If I said style H one, and we want to say color red, only the file inside the layout file has the color red. Meanwhile, in this index file, we have an H one there. So I just wanted to point out that there's a way to make it global where this actually affects everything. The way we do that is we prefix this with global and then we wrap it in a little bracket. So it's almost like a function. And if I save this, so you can see that we have welcome to surf spots in both, both of them are red, which is amazing. I mean, I don't really want them both to be red, so we can go back out there and it can be back to being scoped. Although that said, I do want the global HTML to have a font family and we're going to make that font family this Arial Havitica Sans Serif one. I just picked autocorrect there. And that changes the font family all around, which is absolutely amazing. I'm actually going to move that to the top because global, I just feel like it should be up there. So all that said, uh, there is a way to use sassy CSS, so SCSS in here, but that is a bit more work. I'm going to do that in the next video. For now, let's just do a bunch of things to actually make our components a bit nicer. Uh, one of them can be, let's focus on our headers. So we can, I'm going to ignore the H1 there. We're going to make a header, target our header fact here. Yeah. And we're going to say background color, I guess we'll say dash color. And I'm just going to use random colors. So this isn't going to look pretty. It's more just to prove a point, aquamarine. And there we go. There's a background of aquamarine. We'll do padding 15 pixels. So that's nice. Now the problem is, there's an H2 or this H1 inside header because we might have other H1s in our stuff. So I do want to specifically target the H1 inside here. I want to say margin zero for that because it ruins with my padding. So if we do that, look, a change happens there. Right, now that that's done, what else could we do? I think we're done with this for now. Like, there we go. We've got a little bit of a header there. Let's add some CSS for our footer. So the footer... This is going to be great to be nice and simple. Our background color could be also aquamarine. Let's make it the same and we can give it a font weight of bold. So now we have a bold footer. There we go. I like feet is now bold. 
this we're going to do display flex we'll do display flex here as you might notice i like to keep my my keys in alphabetical order i just find that that's easier to read once someone was tuning me because i said oh i'm weird that way and that's why i do it and they complained that i said i'm weird it's like i am weird i like things to be in order but it's also there is reason to it and we're gonna add padding 15 px here so there we go we have a footer we have a header and to make a main area around the slot here this will be like our main content and that's going to be containing the slot that way we can actually style the slot as well so in the middle here i like to do this in order because you read header then main then footer i'm going to add a background color of something called blanched almond there we go it's a pretty little blanched almond uh again we'll do padding 15 pixels and there we go it's got some padding now which is wonderful we can do some other stuff to this later as you can see there's white borders around here not pretty but i want to deal with that in the next video when we add in scss but as you can see here we've got like a header now we've got a main we've got a footer and we've been able to style it maybe one last thing let's show you how javascript works so in our footer let's pretend we wanted to say copyright 2021 because that's when i'm filming this actually this is coming out in 2022 copyright 2022 that's the problem the date is changing next year and i want it to be the current year so right now i don't want to think about having to change this later i want to make this an actual date so what i can do is i can add a script tag at the top and because this is felt we can just add a script tag so we're going to make a date it's be const date equals new date this is a javascript thing and we can say get full year. You can see this order complete on all of this. And it's a function that we call. So if I replace this with date, yours is probably going to say 2022, but mine will say 2021 when I say it. it works. Let's say if I say get full year plus five, we'd expect this to be 2026. Let me hit save. There we go. It's 2026. So our date function is actually working. That's a really nice way for us to add some javascript to work with our application here so i know this is looking like a lot i should actually move this down a bit so we can see more you see we're starting to get some styling going on here which is awesome now there are ways to clean this up a bit like for example here we have header and then we're targeting the h1 in there and that's exactly what we're going to look at in the next video see you then cheers